Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever episode of the College Express podcast. We are all part of the College Express team, and let me start off with myself. I am Tyler Glaude. I work on the website primarily. I also do some fun things with banner ads, creative emails. If you've seen me on the YouTube series before on college cooking, that's me. I went to Champlain College in Burlington, Vermont. So. Uh, my name is Molly Harding. I'm a marketing assistant at College Express. Uh, I do all marketing and social media for College Express. Um, I went to JMU in Virginia for two years and then transferred to Towson University in Baltimore, Maryland for the other two. So. I am Kara Joyce, I'm an editorial assistant here at College Express. Uh, so I basically look through the blogs and articles before the editor does. I write some stuff for the website, uh, you may have seen it. Uh, I also went to Champlain College in Burlington, Vermont. So this, that's hey, fun. <laughs> Can't chip. <laughs> okay, so with this podcast, our goal is to be helping you throughout your career as a student and onward. Today we're going to be talking about new beginnings. It's a new beginning for us starting this podcast. It's a new beginning for a lot of you that are returning back to school or going back to school for the first time. So we had a lot of you write in. There's some questions that we want to answer, so we're just going to get started right off the bat. All right, so the first question we have today comes from Aya the Awesome on Instagram. She asks, what should you pack for college? The dorms are usually a bit small, so what would you suggest bringing? I don't know who wants to kick that one off. So the first thing I would recommend doing is going to your college's website and looking at what's not allowed. Uh, some co every college is different. Some will allow you to have like microwaves in your room or coffee pots and things like that. And you don't want to invest in something like a coffee pot if you're going to a small school where they have smaller dorms and you can't have those in them. Only to like get there and find out that you can't have them. Just like th that's the first thing I would do because I would I would hate to pay a hundred dollars for a microwave and then show up and be like oh I can't mom take this home I guess. That's a, a good point with that too with the George Foreman grill. Not sure if it's as popular it was when I was in school. However, those were not allowed in my dorm. So definitely make sure to check that list Don't because uh, I was yeah. illegally grilling <laughs> in my dorm room until I was gone. Yeah, I mean, I would just say that less is more. Um, you'll find out that you really don't need as much stuff as you have at home. So just bring what you need, and then you can always have your parents send you stuff if you forget it. Um, but honestly, yes, the dorm room is small. Yeah. Um, you're limited to space, so just bring what you need, and um, you'll be able to survive. To kind of riff off of what Kara was saying, yeah. find that list, but also Find out who your roommate is and make sure that you're not bringing duplicates of the same items. Uh, mini fridges uh, might be allowed, might not be allowed in your dorm. If they are allowed, make sure that there's only one coming to the room. If you have multi mini fridges, it's going to get a little hectic. Uh, all of a sudden, you don't have room to store things. Or maybe you don't want to share food, so bring two. <laughs> That's true. Maybe you don't want to share food. The other thing, too, is Bring clothes if you're somewhere, if you're used to a warm climate yeah. or anything like that and you're, you're changing locations, make sure to bring at least clothes for different climates if the climate is going to change. Bring a, at least a jacket of some sort. I know you start school and it's relatively warm but it gets cold quickly. Not to say that you can't go back and get clothes but yeah. it's nice to have an array of clothes ready yeah. so you're not freezing or too cold, too that's the same thing as freezing, but or too yeah. hot. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're like moving somewhere severe, like if you're going from like Texas to Maine, bring a jacket, bring at least a couple of hoodies, um, just so that you're prepared for when the weather gets cooler and you can't you can't go home um, and get your winter jacket, or maybe you don't have a winter jacket. I don't know how cold it gets in Texas, but. It can be rough. Yeah, <laughs> and um, a good idea is to make um, like a Google Doc, like a Google Sheet uh, with your roommate and then just have like a list of all the things that your college requires or all the things that you, you will want to bring and then you can keep track of who has what and who needs to get um, on that. So that's a really easy way because a lot of times, you know, you and your roommate aren't close to each other in proximity. So that's a good way to stay organized so you don't duplicate stuff. And also, from my experience, bring one nice pair of clothing. Yeah. You will go somewhere that 
you're gonna regret not having it if you if you if you don't. So my whole wardrobe was a packet of white t-shirts, a few jeans, and then I had one thing hanging in my closet that was a pair of khakis, a nice button-up shirt, and a tie, and some nice shoes. Yeah. Just in case somebody pulls you out and says, hey, this is a great opportunity. If I show up with white t-shirts and jeans, I'm gonna look like, who is this kid? Yeah, there's usually a job fair of some sort for like on-campus jobs somewhere in the first month or so. And if you want an on-campus job or if you're looking for a job off-campus, you definitely want like girls a nice dress or a skirt, guys, a pair of khakis and a, just a white button down or even a polo. Yeah, be fine. definitely. Or even if you just want to look good. Yeah. You know, one day you're just feeling sharp and you're like, you know what, I want to look really bad. Okay, Molly so. says that, but I can look good in a trash bag. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously. My friends did that once. It was someone's birthday and they're like, we're all going to get fancy. We're going to go downtown. We're going to get sushi. And we went to this dive bar sushi place and we were all fancy and dressed up. Someone had a top hat and like mm -hmm. everyone, the guys were wearing suits. And I'm like, this is, this is weird, but I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, fancy Fridays. Exactly. Love it. There you go. Yeah. Okay, and to bring you a little bit more information if you go to our website and there is an article that we'll put in the description below but there is a complete list of what to pack the essentials and now we'll go over everything we touched briefly on a lot of things but uh, toothbrush deodorant like nitty-gritty things you're gonna want to bring that article has Clorox wipes Clorox wipes are, are big Very crucial. okay so our next question comes from Nadia M2001 I'm not sure if that's Instagram or Twitter, but you can find her somewhere. <laughs> what uh, was the hardest thing about having a roommate? Any general advice for people who plan to live on campus? Also, we can talk about off campus here too. Yeah. What's the difference between living on and off campus and also having roommates? Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, so I think the hardest thing about having a roommate, um, especially if you're sharing a room, is um, just sharing a room with somebody and being with them like almost 24 7 except for when you're at class or doing whatever um, it's really hard to acclimate to that unless you you know shared a room with like your siblings or whatever um, so it's definitely a huge adjustment just because you have to learn you know your living patterns and um, what annoys the other person um, but yeah it's difficult especially if you have different schedules so for example, um, I had a roommate who uh, stayed up really late um, and, you know, was totally a night owl and I am a bear and sleep a lot. So, you know, she would be up like 11, 12 studying and had like a little light on. And so that was kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. So just making sure to have open communication and, you know, let your roommate know like, hey, I go to bed like when the sun is still up. So if we could arrange <laughs> you to um, go somewhere else, maybe yeah. to study. Um, but no, you, it, 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 you just have to be patient because you're gonna have to. You're gonna learn a lot about that person, and they're gonna learn a lot about you. So um, be patient and have open communication. Um, but it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard, no matter what. You're doomed. Yeah. Just kidding. Not, not quite doomed, but uh, <laughs> the first thing we had to do was we were required to make a roommate agreement. Even if you're not required, I highly recommend it. Just because then you have a set of rules that are that's down there and it's like, please don't play music at 1 o'clock in the morning because I'm sleeping. Uh, then you have something to go back to be like, I told you this in September. It is now December. Why are you not taking the trash out? It's your turn or something like that. So that you have this, this basis for what to do. Um, and you're gonna fight with your roommate at some point, it's inevitable. You're gonna have a fight, but this will sort of contain it so that it's not enormous and you don't blow up. Yeah, I, you talk about roommate issues. Um, <laughs> I, I had roommate issues my first year. Uh, Molly mentioned open communication, that is that is key. I want to make everybody aware that open communication doesn't always work, however, you can talk to your campus advisors and the living situation and actually I got my dorm room moved. Uh, not to get into too much detail, but my roommate was, uh, did not listen, walked around with his robe open playing Guitar Hero 24-7. Very embarrassing to bring anybody back to our dorm room. It was terrible. So I went from living in a double with this man and 
got into a forced triple because two of my friends from college allowed me to room in with them. So that brought in a, a whole slew of different issues. We went from having very much opposite rooms of here's my side, here's your side, to okay, now we're in a double and there's one bed over here, there's three desks shoved into a two bedroom room. Where's everybody's stuff go? How do we communicate and make sure everything's all right? Luckily, they're all very friendly and as I mentioned, they, they took me in. So. Open communication is key. We definitely butted heads with the two other guys I lived with later on, but uh, nowhere near open rope. <laughs> so open communication, definitely key. And just to bring it to the next segment too, uh, on campus or off campus, yeah. on campus, I believe is going to be required for a lot of you for your freshman year. A lot of people are forced to, forced is a strong word, but are strongly encouraged to <laughs> live in the campuses for their freshman year you should yeah, and yeah definitely. that's i think we can all we just all agreed that yeah. living on campus your first year especially if you don't know anybody i didn't know yeah. my first roommate obviously when i moved in with him it's a great chance to meet people the guys i ended up living with i was just in his wedding a few weeks ago so you meet friends for life yeah. and it's it's really important yeah, definitely um, because, you know, the first two years of college I lived on campus. Um, actually, that's a lie. Okay, the first year I lived on campus, the last three I lived off. And um, when you live off campus, you don't feel as um, involved in, you know, like the college life, I guess. So, I mean, obviously you still are having fun and you, you go to class forever. But when you're on campus, you're always there. And so when you first enter college and you kind of have this image of what it's like, definitely live on campus because it's gonna, you know, meet your expectations. Um, and then, you know, as you get used to it and you get busier, you get older, then living off campus is better. Um, just so you have your own, you know, your own space and you can kind of like get away from all the craziness. Um, so definitely recommend living on campus. It's a really good experience, yeah. it's a good challenge. I lived on campus all four years, and I, I really liked that, I mean, in different aspects. Like, I had a roommate for three, two and a half years, and then I was an RA for a year and a half. And that was, like, a different side of the experience, but I still had that community. And I had friends that lived off campus, so I had, like, all the benefits of living off campus. I could crash on their couch when I wanted to, but um, I still got to, like, go home, and I, I had the community that, that comes from living on campus. And it's really good, especially for your for your first year, uh, because you... I didn't went to a college that I didn't know anyone, so it was really nice to like meet people, and it was just a place to call home, which is really cool in our dorm. It's nice. Yeah, a lot of the dorms will have icebreakers too your first year, so you get to know the people that are in your dorm, not just your roommate, but everybody else that's in that area, which is extremely helpful. I didn't stay on campus after my first year. I, I did move into an apartment, mm -hmm. and I, that was great. It's it's a little strange when you're not on campus all the time experiencing every single event like you were freshman year. However, it's a little nice too. Uh, where we ended up moving was right next to a bowling alley, so come on. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, I think another thing I'll add is just that um, uh, when, you know, when you leave college and you first you know, are like independent, away from your parents, being on campus, you still have a little bit of like restriction just because like, your RAs and there are rules um, so I feel like it is kind of nice just because like it'll really help you like, you know, hanker down and have some kind of um, discipline your first year. But then when you're off campus, you are on your own. Yeah. Nobody, you know, it's your apartment, do your thing. So I, um, it's your security deposit. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just, yeah, keep that in mind when you're deciding whether or not to live yeah. on campus or off campus. Also, a small thing to bring up there is parking on campus oh. versus off campus. So bad! There's like never parking on it's campus. awful! So if you live off campus, your chances of having a parking spot dedicated to yourself are significantly higher and Depends you can Depends on where you live. If you live in like New York or Boston, right. you're yeah. never gonna get parking. <laughs> yeah, I live True. in Boston and I still can't get parking. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a No, you be sick kids, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. yeah. If you, if you don't have to bring a car, don't bring your car. On campus parking is tough. Yep. If you went to school in Vermont, bring your car. Oh, yes. <laughs> you need a car in Vermont. 
But if you don't need one otherwise, like in a city, um, I guess I didn't really need one in Towson, but I still had mine. But, oh man, I would have to get to class like 30, 45 minutes early just to get that spot. And I would chase you down. If it looks like you were, if it looks like you were leaving, oh, I'd say, hop in, I'll take you to your spot. <laughs> it's a doggy dog world. All right, so for our next question comes from Leanne X. Lara. Laura? Lara. Leanne X. Lara. Leanne Lean X. Lara. It comes from somebody on Twitter. <laughs> what are some ways to combat homesickness? So I guess I'll kick this one off. Homesickness uh, for me was very rough. I didn't go to school super far away. I was only gone three and a half hours north of where I grew up. However, at the time, my girlfriend and I were high school sweethearts and we had been together for four years at that point. Moving three and a half hours north while she was going to a different college was very rough. Not necessarily that I missed home so much, but I missed not being able to hang out with her every day. Oh. So... <laughs> oh. They're getting married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, getting married in a month, so yeah. that's pretty Yay. exciting. Uh, so anybody that tells you high school sweethearts don't work out, come find me. <laughs> so that was difficult. Uh, however, with our day and age and the technology that we have with phones, FaceTime, computers, Skype, all that, it makes it a lot easier. You can schedule time to call them, check up, see how everything's doing. Not to say that you should call them every second of every day and be nagging because one, that will drive your partner insane. And two, uh, your minutes will just get eaten up and that's no good for anybody. So there are uh, ways to combat that. Also, care packages being sent by you know, girlfriend's family, having those pop in is very nice and very rewarding to open those up. Even uh, just a simple text to somebody is, is great. And being able to go back home, uh, depends on how far you're going to college. Like I said, I was only three and a half hours north of where I grew up, so it wasn't terribly long, but it's not something I could go back every weekend. It was just a, enough distance to be like, okay, if there's a long weekend, yeah. let's go home, let's see everybody. If it's a vacation, let's go home. But if it was just a weekend, it's like, all right, let's yeah. tough it out. It's fine. That that hole in your heart is, yeah. it hurts, but yeah. it's okay. I got this. And kind of going off of that, if you go to school close to home, don't go every week. Don't go home every weekend. Um, I had a friend who did that. She was very much a homebody. She went to school 45 minutes from home. She went home sometimes during the weekdays too, definitely every weekend. And that's counterproductive because you're trying to combat this homesickness and that's just going home that's not teaching you how to survive without being home because you are going to move out someday you have to you. or your parents will get very upset like that guy in new york state <laughs> whose parents <laughs> brought him to court yeah. <laughs> you don't want to end up like that guy. <laughs> so don't go home every weekend take hold of that independence and it's gonna it's gonna be rough i mean I, I got homesick i think in like the second or third month um and that was like right in time to like come home for a long weekend and i suddenly like missed all my friends from college and i had like you you create this new life for yourself and that's i think the strongest way to combat homesickness is going to events making new friends joining new clubs um getting to know people in your dorm whether it's your roommate your um, hallmates or anything like that it's just it's it's a way to to sort of help you become that more independent adult and I don't like that word but <laughs> become that more independent adult and get used to sort of the like in betweenness that you have of being like out of the house but still in the house yeah um, well for me um, did it click I can't tell um, but for me I was not homesick at all. I was one of those that was ready to go. As soon as my parents dropped me off, I ran and I didn't look back. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I'm close with my parents, but I really was so ready to be on my own. Um, I always wanted to be independent. So um, that, and along with Tyler, my school was also like three and a half hours away. It was uh, three and a half hours south of where I live in Maryland. And um, I found that actually being away from my family 
made us much closer. You know, because, you know, when you're a senior in high school, you've about, like, had it to hear with your parents, and your parents are ready for you to leave as well. Um, so when I, whenever I come home, it was a nice treat. Um, because they're like, oh, we, we actually miss you. I was like, I kind of miss you too. <laughs> um, so it's really nice. So, But just hang in there. Um, it'll get better. It is a hard transition in so many different ways going from high school to college. So just be patient and stick it out because, you know, you'll learn ways to cope with not being home. And again, it will get better, I promise. Just give it some time. It might also, it might also not be as bad as you think it's going to be. Like you might be very close with your be friends worse. and family. Yeah, it could be worse yeah. too. You could always, um, say could always that's, be worse. That's when you start looking into transferring. <laughs> but we have a whole section of the site for that. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, be. it might not be as bad as you think. You might be. I was super nervous going into college, and I was ready to be independent too. But I was so nervous, like. I was, I was the weird kid in high school. <laughs> I was like, what if I'm the weird kid here? And I don't want to be like, I have no friends. And then like immediately I was like, bye mom. <laughs> why, do you, why are you following me? <laughs> That's a, you brought up a couple of great points. Is one, who you are in high school, I feel like kind of sticks with you all throughout, especially if you went to the same middle school, high school mm -hmm. with that same core group of people, you kind of get a label tossed on you and it sticks. Mm -hmm. When you go to college, A, it's a, an opportunity to redefine yourself you're really going to grow in those four years more than you have previously in any other education system those four years you really define your your character traits that you you like or you don't like and things that you you agree with you don't agree with your moral code everything is kind of defined in in those years so everybody that i met in college not to say that everybody will be very open, very friendly. I hung out with kids that I would never have hung out with in my high school just based on what they like to do and what I like to do and ours not matching. But we found common ground on a lot of things, just being in classes, talking about different subjects and it was, it was great. Also with uh, the homesickness, going back to that too, one of the best ways I found to combat that, especially freshman year, is there's gonna be a host of intramurals oh, yeah. and there'll be fairs, there'll be Everything you can imagine too. There's like chess club. There's uh, you know there's skydiving club. There's I'm, that might not be in your school. There's rock board climbing. Board game club. <laughs> board game club. Parkour yeah. was a big one. Huh? Hardcore parkour. Yeah. <laughs> so there, I mean, there is legitimately everything that you can imagine probably exists, and if it doesn't, you can make it your own group, and then people will join it. So embed yourself in to that culture, embed yourself into those clubs and activities, and one, you're gonna feel less homesick, and two, you're gonna make friends a lot quicker, a lot faster, and you'll be happier. All right, so the last question we have today is from Elise de Barros. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. If not, I apologize, Elise, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. <laughs> and that's from Instagram, so feel free to follow her there. How do I make time for fun in my busy schedule during the school year? How do you make time for studying in your busy fun schedule is the better question. Um, I think this probably comes from a high school student because when you get to college, you're gonna have, we had, we had to take five classes or we paid for five courses per semester. So I, <clears throat> and each is like three hours long. I think it was like an hour and 15 minutes per class. Mm -hmm. um, each week it ended up being a three hours per week some magic way with math, with my, my, that math. Um, so I'm in class for six hours a day, maybe, no, maybe. three hours a day. Yeah. Um, maybe if I have two or three classes, then I have the rest of the day off to like do whatever, homework, hang out with friends, usually hang out with friends, eventually do homework at like two o'clock in the morning. But you, you get distracted by, by doing all this fun stuff and there's gonna be activities in the middle of the day. We, we would hang out in the dining hall for like two hours and just chat about stuff. It gets, the time gets away from you. The, the problem is really ends up ending, ends up being figuring out when to put in studying. Yep. <laughs> it's not at two o'clock in the morning because you need sleep. sleep. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it depends on who you are, but I feel like a majority of people who go to college um, have, like Kara said, the opposite problem finding time for studying and all the fun um, because you have a lot of freedom now, nobody's telling you when and where you should study, um, you kind of have to self-discipline. So 
a lot of people get kind of carried away um, and they, you know, always pick the fun over studying. Um, yes. So it's really hard <laughs> to find a balance, um, but you will definitely learn from your mistakes. I definitely did. Um, for example, my first semester, I was pretty excited about the freedom and I didn't do all that well <laughs> grade wise. Um, compared to, you know, my senior year, I made the dean's list every semester. So you just have to figure out, you know, the balance um, and you, you know, especially around like midterms and uh, finals come around and it all slaps you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I should have probably like done something this semester. Yeah. Um, but you'll learn from your mistakes. But um, just some advice ahead of time, definitely prioritize school. Um, because it's expensive and it's hard, um, but it's worth it when you do well. So make sure it's a priority, but also have fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have fun, number one, because after those four years, unless you continue education, they're gone and they go yeah. quick. <laughs> they go real it's quick. Dark. <laughs> super dark. <laughs> I'm just telling it like. It is. <laughs> But I think, so a couple of things, you, you guys touched on it too. High school and middle school, everything is very, your hands being held, here's how everything's gonna be. You have a certain amount of time to do things in class, out of class, you're assigned homework every single night. A lot of the times in college, you're gonna get there, they're gonna hand you a course syllabus and they're gonna say, this is when certain things are due, you're on your own. You have that one class a week that's gonna last maybe an hour 15, maybe three hours if it meets only once a week. But your, your hand is no longer being held. You, you are on your own, and that is where the issues come in with, okay, well, I'm in class, I made it to class, that's great, boom, done. Well, now you still have to set aside time to get your schoolwork done. A lot of people are gonna go out, have parties, have fun, be in those intramural sports I talked about earlier. But because Elise is writing this question, it's also important to note, your freshman year at college is going to have a wide arrangement of students and what their level of education is. Yeah. Depending on where you went to school, you might actually find your freshman year a lot easier than your senior year of high school. Because of you writing this yeah. question, Elise, I think you might be okay, unless you're going somewhere like Harvard or like something insane. But <sighs> right, it, she could be. Who knows? But, no, 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 uh, I mean, like, please, she'll do fine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I believe in you, Elise. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's the main thing is that everybody's going to have fun, everybody's going to have a good time, but the balance is very important. Make sure you're going to hit those course syllabus deadlines. Make sure that you have ample time for the midterm and yeah. the final. Those are usually weighted the heaviest out of everything. Yeah. But uh, you're going to have more of an issue the opposite of the question. So and you go to class, Important. even if it's not required go to class. Like Molly said, you're paying a lot, like a lot of money for this. Each, I think we figured out like each class was like $300 for us. So when a teacher would, uh, when a professor would cancel, we'd be like, it just cost me $300. And I already woke up and it's eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so go go to class and like pay attention because that, that makes doing your homework easier. I mean, I literally study for, for tests because I would take notes during lectures and like I would review those notes. I wouldn't reread the chapter or anything. It was like all based on that. So go to class, pay attention, be active and participating because that's the biggest asset for you to help you maintain that balance so that you have more time for fun. Yeah. And my, I mean, this is what my dad raised me to remember is the key to life is balance. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just make sure that you're not doing too much of one or the other. Um, make time for fun, but definitely make time for school. Um, so, yeah. All right. So that's it for our first ever College Express podcast. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe, hit that like button because it does keep the lights on. Otherwise, we're out here and we don't get to do as much fun things. So we would love for you to hit that button, subscribe, like, keep it coming. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to us through our website on College Express. If you have any questions you want read on this show, do the exact same thing or leave a comment in the sections below.